everyone loves Nick these. And if you don't, I'll rip your fucking heart out and eat your flesh. In other news, Nick's YouTubes have appeared in a number of uh, recent video games in recent years, also films, but we're not going to concentrate on those. We'll run through a few examples before we get started. One of the places I personally have a Nixie count, Nixie tube devices that are active is in my frequency counter, my Nixie clock, my Kovac K80 calculator, which uses a rare 7 seg kind, also known as Pan. Fallout 4 uses Nixie tubes in the last minute and also the Power Armor, as well as a few other places in the DLC. Portal 2 has a more sort of elaborated, uh, more ambiguous Nixie tubes used in the uh, off in the 1960s to the whole old aperture. TF2 uses the a Nixie watch as the death clock in their film expiration date, which is highly recommended. If I remember, I stick a link to the in the description. I highly recommend you watch that. It's funny as all hell. Finally, because this is on the Xbox and I don't have any recording cap for it, so there's no nice screenshot, we have Metro Last Light. And you'll notice... Nixie Watch. I should build one of those. Be even more chunky than the one in the game, though. So in order to operate the watch, all you have to do is tilt your wrist to the desired angle that you set. You can set this. And it will display very much like this, the hours followed by the minutes and then the seconds if you continue to hold it in that position. It takes some practice to get used to. It uses a standard 22mm waterproof leather watch, although the watch isn't fully waterproof. Through capillary action, which is basically water being sucked into small gaps, it actually manages to make it through the glass and onto the other side where it can then cause it to steam up inside. So this is not a watch you should take underwater under any circumstances. It's sort of rainproof, splash proof. If you run it under the tap, it's a-okay, but not one to go swimming with. To set the time, you basically press the bottom button and this will give you the option between 12 and 24 hour mode. I personally prefer 12 hour mode, that's me. Then you can set the hours, you press the top button to set those, it's already set correctly so I'm not going to be uh, changing anything. Then the minutes which starts on the tens and goes to the units. Then the seconds, you basically can only reset the seconds so you can uh, calibrate it to a particular clock of your desire. If you've got an atomic clock you're obviously calibrated to that. I don't currently have an atomic clock. And the last thing is the angle. What you do here is you basically hold it in the angle you want it to trigger and press the top button. I am very happy with the angle it currently triggers. Then you're done. And it will just resume normal operation. So yeah, that's one of the things is uh, better sealant is needed around the glass, but other than that it's pretty awesome. The overall design is very nicely built. And they are individually serial numbered because these aren't going to be something that are a mass manufacturer. They are currently still being produced, which is why I'll put a link down to Cathode Corner in the description if you want one. And of course, this wouldn't be the EEPROM 9 if we didn't show you inside. Now, the lithium battery is a 3.7 volt lithium polymer, 180 milliamp hours. The Nixie tubes I use are replaceable. The basically all the control electronics are on the bottom board, including an in-circuit programmer. On the side we have the switches and what looks to be the main um, gyro accelerometer. I'm not 100% sure exactly whether it's both combined or just single, so it can tell the angle. On the bottom here we have three chips, one of which is the PIC microprocessor and two will be drivers that I haven't actually googled the part numbers of. Naughty naughty. Sadly there is no PCB art to be found on any of the PCBs, which is a shame. We've got the GND marked then, the US 
oscillator, so we've got easy probe points for probing the uh, device. As the thing is very much designed so the user can do maintenance like replacing the tubes, the battery, as well as you can send it back to the manufacturer if you wish. The screws are tiny little Allen key type screws, which I find the only screw I have is a Torx T5 that will fit it. However, I don't think that's quite correct. I think they might be using some weird ass evil imperial type screws, which is really annoying. Because there's only one country in the world that uses imperial, and they need to stop it now. But that is the internals. Up here we've got the main power regulator as well, and that's the transformer for the HV inverter. Now, I don't know if I can get it to replicate it, but there is one little floor that goes with general use. You may have seen it there. Sometimes that digit delays in coming on compared to that one, and sometimes that one won't come on at all. It will just stay as that one where there's something in the multiplexing that doesn't cause the other tube to light but usually when you uh, activate it a few times it goes back to normal which tells me it's probably something to do with the HV circuit not being charged up when you've done it because you may not have looked at your time for a while but yeah other than that it's pretty damn awesome and worth every penny spent I highly recommend if you're interested in these because these things are one of those rare items that are not manufactured very often, they're only manufactured in small batches. If you want one and can afford it, go out and buy one, don't hesitate. Save up if you have to. But these are awesome and I absolutely love it and have been enjoying it. People at work have even, people have even noticed it when I'm out and about which is awesome. Most of which don't know what it is, but people at work actually not only noticed it and liked it, but they knew what it was, which was fantastic. But yeah, thanks for watching. Oh yeah. And here's the base. A little bit of silicon sealant in there should do it. I just need to get myself a syringe and stick some silicon in there and just do a little bead going around so that it's fully waterproof because I tend to be the type that forgets I'm wearing my watch and jumps in the swimming pool. As a side note, the watch with everyday standard usage will lead you to about two weeks worth of battery life before you need to start charging it and otherwise it starts flashing. And when you're not using it every day and you leave it chilling on your side, you can get longer. And look at that, we have a power timeout feature. Thanks for watching. The watch also has a power saving feature that when you leave it in the seconds by holding your hand still, it will gradually time out by flashing them faster and for shorter periods for about 20 seconds until they finally completely go out. And we can see that it's timed out and if you leave it like this, it will then display the time after a set amount of time, about a minute. It will do that every minute. So it will continue to display the time. So it's not recommended to leave it like this, but you will drain your battery quicker, but you won't completely drain it. There we go, so now it's displaying it again. And it will keep doing it like that over and over again. In conclusion, I'd like to put out a massive thank you to David at Cathode Corner for putting these back out and producing them again, as I have literally wanted a Nixie watch for way over a decade because the whole VFD clock I was working on was a byproduct because of Nixie watches. Anyway, from me, I think it's time to go. Thanks for watching.